VBD12 Divine Lightning Radiance reveals start today and they start with a bang! Yes, I know you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title of the video and I promised you guys that today we would not have a card fed update or a card reveal video and just something like a set review or a deck spotlight. But unbeknownst to me, Bushroad shifted the release schedule of their Friday stream to today because of a certain event that's happening this week for Bushroad. So we've got the first reveals of VBD12 and it is quite an impactful card but besides the singular card revealed today they also put out an information about a confirmation of certain cards that are going to be returning in this set and depending on which side of the fence you are this is either super exciting news for you or you're dreading the fear of what's gonna happen to your beloved cards but before we get into that segment, let's jump straight into the new card that was revealed to us because we've got one new reveal for Angel Feathers, which is the first triple R of this set. And it is looking really, really good because Bushroot revealed a new triple R Grey 2, which is Black Aquarius Juff Kiel. I probably butchered that pronunciation, but that's what we're going for today. And her ability, is auto vanguard to rigor circle when placed cause counter bless one and this unit gets power plus 3k until the end of turn return a card from your damage zone to your hand and if you return a card deal one damage to your vanguard this ability may only be used by a card with the same card name once per turn perform a damage check so it has the hard and the main once per turn ability now on the surface, when you look at the skill, you might think to yourself, what's the big deal here? It's not that really powerful. We have seen this before in the V era where we can swap cards from a damage zone. How is this such an impactful skill? Because it's similar to things like Haste to Deal or Arab Haki that can just swap cards from the damage zone and then replenish the damage zone with something else. And yes, that might be true, but that's really low-balling the effectiveness and the power potential of this card. Because for one, the extra 3k power might not be that amazing, but it is very effective for Angel Feathers, especially in the early game. It becoming a 12k unit means no matter the situation, even if you went second against the Force Clan, this thing can beat against a 10k base unit. It can also beat against the 12k Vanillas if you're up against such a thing. It also makes really nice numbers with 8k boosters, as that together with an 8k booster is a 20k column, so once again, a magic number in the early game against a 10k Vanguard if you're up against a Force Clan. So it makes really good numbers in the early game, and is just overall a good number in the mid to late game. Another major part here is is that this card actually is a plus unlike something like a hazy deal or an arp hockey that just cycles cards from your hand to the damage zone for their skill this just fetches a card from the damage zone and add it to your hand so it's a direct plus in card advantage and not only that it's somewhat a free card because you counter blast one then grab the card that you want and you can just counter blast the card that you want and add it to your hand and then put another card from your deck into the damage zone and that card is going to be face up. Make making this card effectively costless as long as you can pay the counter blast up front. That is a lot of value because that's potentially a free plus. But that's still not where this card ends in value wise because it is a new form of rescue check because you deal yourself the damage. Meaning... It is a pseudo triple drive potential as you get potentially an extra critical, an extra heal, an extra draw off of those extra drive check or that damage check, which is what the whole thing was with rescue. So to basically summarize, this card is an effective 12k beater that can beat anything even if you went second. It also can make magic numbers with an 8k booster behind it. It is a free plus one to some extent as you can just fetch any, anything that you want unlike the swappers we have had before those aren't card advantage cards but they can increase the consistency or the quali card quality of your hand this is just a direct plus and on top of that it deals yourself an extra damage so it's basically an extra drive check on top of the drive check you will have on your grade two turn or during your twin drive grade three turns which is really good but again 
there is even more beyond this because this card's condition to activate the skill is auto when placed not when placed from hand and this is where we're going to get into the actual spicy part of this card because everything that i just discussed is just a pure raw card value within this ability but once we are going to dissect this condition from one place and put it uh, alongside all the cards that angel feathers has that's where we get into the crazy part and this is where Angel Feather pro players or just the hardcore clan members know exactly what the potentials of this card. In standard currently there isn't a lot to manipulate here because standard angels is very bare bone and very one dimensional in what their place does. But there is one particular strategy that can really work well with this effect and that is Malk of Malak. Because Malk of Malak can superior call free units from the drop zone. You can basically call this card of for one of those free cards and then use its ability every single turn to then get another card from your damage zone into your hand and get one extra damage check. And with the already added damage check of Malk of Malak, you don't get a triple drive, but you get a somewhat of a quadruple drive, which also pluses you on hand every single turn, which is really good for something like Malk of Malak. So... Honestly, this is a really good card for that particular strategy in just the way that it just functions. Besides that, that is basically where the mainline effectiveness and standard stops. Now, in premium, this is a complete different story because in premium, this thing can do all kinds of nutty interactions because there are so many different combos that you can do. You have some interactions during the guard step with G Guardians that can interact with certain cards that could potentially superior call this thing from the damage zone or from the drop zone mid guarding and then achieve its ability to then draw a card from your damage zone to maybe hard guard against the attack maybe a perfect guard or just the shield that you need for the guard step but you can also use it more as an offensive play with the mid battle rescue so you could get multi attacks off of this particular card and then can fetch you more cards so there are definitely some really interesting synergies that this card has in premium besides the plays that you already can do in standard so so this card in particular is a really really strong triple R just out of the gate without any other support card around it there is no we don't really need a context to see the power potential of this particular card because it's such a strong versatile effect but now the question arises how will the rest of the support line shape up? This particular effect really goes down the rescue check mechanic that we have in Ajira. The difference here is, however, is that the rescue check is from the damage zone to your hand instead of from the damage zone to the drop zone, what was the case in Ajira. So maybe this will more hint to a defensive stance so that you actually get card advantage while doing the rescue checks, unlike the more offensive play style that was the case with Gavriel in the, G in the G era. So maybe the new G era Gavriel is going to be more focused on hand advantage but we could also see some mid combo superior calling as this particular effect states when placed and not when placed from hand so is that a telling sign to what the future support for angel feathers has in store for us or is this just a one-off of a very versatile effect and the rest is going to be as restrictive that we've seen before this is only just speculation i'm very excited to see what the future has in store for us because this card alone was enough to make a very eventful day because a lot of players were very excited for this reveal now of course this wasn't the only news that was revealed today because at the end of the stream we also saw the confirmation of what is going to be revealed next week's friday so this week's friday we have no live stream because that was today so all the way up into the next month, that Friday, that's when we're going to get another extra live stream. And in that live stream, they're going to reveal Bluish Flame Liberator, Percival, and Eclavain. So the original Gold Paladin, Bluish Flame Legion pair. Now, I know that a lot of players, at least Gold Paladin players, were demanding that these cards will get introduced in the VR for the longest of time. I, I've seen those comments for a very, very long time. So I know that at least some players are excited. But I also know that a lot of Gold Pattern players are now terrified for the fact that these cards are now confirmed. And this all has to do with Bushrode's track record with these pseudo sub-archetypes that they give a little bit of support and that's it. A good example 
is Metal Borgs for Dimension Police. That's just a two-off card combo for Urbuster and Simbuster that doesn't really do anything. It's not really that amazing. It's okay for a budget standpoint, but it's not that great. Same goes for 7 Cs for Grand Blue. It's a pretty interesting and fun budget deck, but it's definitely not on the top tier tables or a very competitive playstyle. So people are skeptical that this is going to be in the same track of those cards that this is probably going to be a two off of cards for that that work together and basically doesn't really do anything else and probably won't see any actual competitive play and maybe is only dedicated for a budget play style and that's about it now is that a big problem i would personally would say not really but then again i never really played with these cards i never i i, I came into the game afterwards so i have no personal attachment to the cards but being a fact that certain cards are restricted to a budget build. I mean, we need budget build cards, but yeah, I, I can understand if people are afraid what's going to happen to their favorite unit. So for now, it's only just speculation and we have to wait for a couple of days, at least more than a week before we know the answer of how strong these cards are going to be. And that basically concludes all the information that was revealed to us today for the official TCG game. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of these new Angel Feather cards. There is a lot of potential here because it's such a strong and versatile effect that there are probably a lot of intricate combos and interactions that at least in the premium side can abuse. And in standard we have the Malkov Malek interaction that can give you a lot of card advantage over the course of multiple turns. But probably we need to wait and see until the rest of the support wave to see what the potential of this card is in standard alone. But in premium size, this card can go the extra miles. As always, this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over patreon.com slash Insider. You guys are amazing. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can go to patreon.com slash Insider and become a patron today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Timeleap. I see you guys. And the next one!